So another interesting feature that kind of kind of ties along with uh, now being able to integrate wireless, uh, maybe MPCIe wireless adapters on a, on a motherboard, even like uh, this this Gene board here, is that you can now well, we're going to see desktops with wide eye feature, which is really cool. Yeah, this is correct. Um, um, this has been something actually we've been trying to request of Intel to work with us on for um, since actually it first released on the previous generation Sandy Bridge platform, but it was only limited to the mobile segment. Um, but for this generation now, um, they've gone ahead and opened it up to allow it to be supported on desktops. So essentially hmm. you have the capability of being able to have a wireless display solution for your desktop. So for people that are interested in a wireless extended display uh, from just the pure point of having productivity, so just having a second panel but wirelessly connected, or or even from a, uh, a media perspective, right, where you want to stream out video to another panel, um, or definitely even from a moderate gaming standpoint for like web-based games um, or for games that can run on the iGPU, then you have an option that's pretty cool, especially in the small form factor segment. Let's uh, show real quick how uh, the, the setup works. It's pretty easy. Uh, you've got to have, obviously, the Intel. Um... Yeah, there's there's three requirements. So, of course, we have our board here. We've got the mini PCI combo adapter. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to have a wireless Intel uh, client solution. So, for example, this one, we have the Intel 6230. Uh, it's a dual band wireless adapter with Bluetooth, so we have both of that. Okay. Um, and that's then running on this combo card with also the, the run core um, MSATA module. So those can both run simultaneously, no issues. Very cool. Um, you have to have a, a San, excuse me, an Ivy Bridge uh, CPU uh, because it does use the QuickSync engine for this actual right. wide eye function. Okay. And then you have to have a corresponding supported chipset. So those okay. three things, essentially all Intel requires. Well, then you also need to have a wide eye supported display or uh, uh, not display, but uh, an adapter, but, re like but this. receiver, correct? Right. Uh, because it connects. So we've to got HDMI. one here. That's this is just uh, from D-Link. It's just uh, one of your kind of standard. Yeah, readily available wide eye receivers. Yeah, there's about four of them on the market right now, and they're all pretty straightforward. They're the same thing. You just connect that to whatever HDMI enabled right. uh, display, and you're good to go. So we've got this. This has got it's got power. We've got the HDMI connected to this display right here, which I will move a little bit more into frame. Uh, and so this is not connected to the to the the uh, computer over here at all. So correct. Yep. How, good to go. Setup's pretty easy. Yeah. So uh, once you install the software, all you have to do is you have a white uh, white eye essentially um, application. Just go ahead and click on it. It will scan for the actual client. So we can see right there, it shows up. There's our uh, D-Link. It's called the main stage. Okay. Now, you do have the option. You can go into the software, and you can actually name it whatever you want to. And you have some adjustments to like resize the display if it doesn't uh, over, it has overscan or underscan issues or things like that. So that's all built into the control panel interface. Okay. Uh, but all we have to do from there is just click Connect. It will go ahead and sync up with it. And at that point, it's initialized. And the reason why it off syncs like that is because it's initializing the display driver model to allow it to be seen gotcha. as a second monitor. Okay. Um, so that's straightforward. So now at this point, if let's say we were to go ahead and go to, uh, let's say here, our screen resolution, we can see that uh, we have two panels here. We have one, we have two. Okay. And we could go ahead and make an adjustment to, to the resolution. Uh, we can have an extended display, which as we see right here, right, if we, uh, Go ahead and take this guy over. Here we are, right here. We're dragging it over. Yep. Um, or we can go ahead and do a uh, duplicate display. So it's up to you. Or we could have a project display. So it's essentially just like having a second monitor physically attached. Almost no differential. OK, so we're going to go ahead and just show what's kind of like the latency performance. So we've got some video on here. Uh, got some Hack 5. This is a cool little tech program. Yeah. So let's go ahead and. Uh, Let's take that there, and we could see we could just drop it over here, and we're full screen. We're streaming that over. We can move this a little bit over here, and uh, yeah. So that's cool. So that's uh, you know something we might see on these small form factor machines. Again, another good idea for uh, home theater based PCs as well that you don't even have to have an HDMI cable anymore going from uh, your machine to a TV as long as you get one of these wide eye. Yeah, definitely. Receivers. And and even for like a moderate gaming, if take for instance, let's say we go ahead and uh, take out our video that we have over here. So let's uh, get over to the media client and we close out to the Windows Media Player. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's say we were to go ahead and take a look here at Street Fighter. Uh, we can go ahead and minimize this. And uh, let's go ahead and go to PC settings here and uh, we'll just go to defaults. Okay. there we'll go ahead and keep that and if we can go ahead and move this over 
see right here, or we can go ahead and also just go to duplicate display. So you could imagine that right. duplication would just allow you to go ahead and port this over. Um, but we'll just go ahead and start that. And it'll go ahead and start. And um, you know, while there is a little bit, there is the transcoding engine that's occurring, it's actually still uh, quite responsive. And even with a game like Street Fighter, where you've got a lot of advanced high speed movement, it's actually uh, very playable. Um, so once again, you have to respect, of course, the performance uh, resident to the iGPU in terms of what it can actually process and execute at the same time. Um, but keeping that in mind, definitely, I think casual gaming is, is uh, definitely an option to even have wirelessly. So like you noted, this would great, work great from, I think, a productivity standpoint, where mm -hmm. you don't want to crowd the sure. space. Two HTPC option or three, like I said, a casual gaming option as well. That's very cool. So that's a wide-eye example on a desktop PC. Yeah. Be sure to check out PCPer.com for more reviews and information on everything PC hardware.